So who are you? I'm Karolina Demenchuk and I'm the founder of Spontime, a new social networking mobile application for uh, spontaneous meetings with friends. And um, yeah, besides this, I'm a student, a huge uh, fan of traveling. <laughs> How did you find out about IdeaMe? Oh yeah, so I actually went on LinkedIn and I tried to find uh, people who could give me advice and who could help me to grow my startup, who could be my inspiration. Uh, so then I found you. I, I looked up, uh, I looked on your profile and I saw uh, idea me, and then I thought it's a great idea to say ask you for your feedback, for your advice, because you seem to be very uh, professional and very experienced uh, person, and I'm very glad I connected with you. <laughs> It's very nice to meet you. Recently, the Huffington Post interviewed you and has said that already your company is worth $3.3 million. You launched 10 days ago. How did a 21-year-old do that? Oh, I mean, it was all very, very, very surprising for me. I, was, I would never expect uh, things uh, turn out this way. So when I founded Spontime six, uh, six months ago, um, at the beginning it was just something cool that I loved to do with my with my co-founders and we were just working on, on the project and when we worked more and more and more we saw that more people loved the idea and they want to, let's say, uh, feature us in the TV shows, in the medias and the investors uh, started approaching us and then the people asked for... Um, asked us all the time, when is the app going to be out? Because we want to already use it. Uh, so all the, let's say, the buzz and the media coverage and everything was not planned. And then, yeah, so then when we had more clarity in Europe, then the Huffington Post messaged me, one journalist, we got, uh, got in touch and we, he, he was very interested in spawn time and he asked if he can write an article about us. And for me, it was, it was something I would never expect and it was an uh, amazing feeling. To, to be in the Huffington Post. What gave you the idea for Spawn Time? Oh, so actually the story is very interesting because I got the idea in October when my classes at my school got cancelled. So I had to wait two hours for the next class and I went to the cafeteria at school and I called my friends, like four or five people, if they are around, but none of them was there, so I decided to wait by myself. And then when I went back to class, I met my friend, told me that he was also waiting this two hours, So, uh, but in the cafeteria downstairs. So we were both waiting for the same class at our university, but in two different cafeterias. And then I realized that actually there was no way I would meet him because he's not my close friend, so I wouldn't call him. I wouldn't message him, on, I wouldn't create a post on Facebook or I wouldn't create a group message for 50 people. But of course, if I knew he's waiting, we would have waited together. So then I realized that there should be a, a platform that will help us meet our friends spontaneously. So for example, right now I want to go, cof to I want to go get coffee so I won't have to call each person separately, but just send a quick invites to, let's say, 30 friends uh, at once. And I'm sure one of them would be interested. So this would be much faster and quicker way to get together. And then I thought that this is something that, that is not on the market yet, and, but, but should be. <laughs> There's a big difference between having an idea and doing something about it. What were the first steps that you took? How long did it take from that first spark to action? So actually it was not long because right after I got the idea, I started looking for my co-founders. Uh, because before that, I had many, many ideas, but I never done anything. So I always said, oh, I want to do this and this and this and this, but I actually never uh, took any action. And then after one year or after two years, I saw someone else doing great with this idea that I had. So now uh, when I got this idea and the classes ended, I went on Facebook and I started posting on Facebook groups uh, that I'm looking for a co-founder. So I went to groups for developers, for mobile designers, and then I was looking people who would be interested, interested in joining uh, my team. And we, uh, we started working, I guess, the same week. And more we worked, more we were involved in it and motivated. And 
yeah, and more people wanted to help us. So actually, the first steps were, were was to find a team, and then decide the plan. So how long will the the development take? How long will this take? And this and this, and then um, yeah, and that was it. <laughs> and what sort of budget did you start with? Oh, I had zero budget. So well, not zero because I had uh, I used to work um, my whole college years. I was working in corporations because I always knew I want to found my own startup. Um, so I used to save. So I saved uh, money during my college years, and then I knew that when I have the idea, I would I would um, let's say spend this money on the idea. But it wasn't a big budget. So people people ask me. So you're probably from very wealthy family because like the developing of the app is very uh, expensive. Mm, but we managed to do it with a low budget. And for example, for marketing, we spent zero dollars. So we didn't spend any cent or mar- on marketing or uh, or or PR or nothing like this. Because I think that if the idea is great and if people like it, then the marketing and everything else just grows. Yeah, that's I don't know how to say it. It, it just by by itself, you know. So my budget was uh, very low. Could you take us through the steps of how you? really moved this process on. You said that you had a very small budget. So how did you do it? So first of all, I think you have to convince people to the idea. Because mm-hmm. if people are, um, in people believe in the idea, they want to work even for free. Because they, uh, they want to be a part of it. So for example, if they believe that this might be the next Facebook, for example, well, I'm not saying that this will be the next Facebook, but if, if they believe that the idea might succeed, uh, then it's more worth to work on this for low cost or for no cost than, than to just give up and then go work somewhere else. And then, you know, it just, I, I believe in that in uh, sometimes money is not equal with the with your work. So, for example, it's better to choose something that you will get uh, less reward uh, than than work for something that you will have, let's say, more salary, bigger salary, but but the work is not satisfying or you don't believe in the values of the project, you, you don't like the project. So, yeah, so I guess this is it. You started off in the first week with a team of how many people? Five people. Five so, people. Mm-hmm. So you must be pretty good at convincing people if you put together a team of five in the first week and had them all working <laughs> free of charge. <laughs> I think that everyone just liked the idea. And, um, well, actually, people tell me that I'm a good seller. So <laughs> people tell me that I could sell any idea I have. But I'm like, no, this is just a cool idea. So... Um, so when I posted on Facebook groups and I, I was uh, uh, I was attending uh, meetings for mobile developers, I went to universities to find my team. And wherever I went, I saw that people were very very interested. And we got I got actually many offers from people who wanted to join me, so I could choose the team. I could pick the, the team, and I'm very happy because the team is really great because we. We built this product together, and I can I can say that when we meet and when we work together, everyone is very involved, and they they put all the heart in the project. And that's why I think it's um, I think in start in startups the most important part is, are the people because I could I could outsource the graphic uh, graphic part, the development part, the the, the PR part, the everything or the marketing, but it won't have this soul. So I'm very happy that I found my team so quickly and I found such a great people so quickly. So, yes. <laughs> so how much would you say it has cost you to, to get the product to this point, launching 10 days ago? Yes, how much it cost me to launch this? In monetary terms. In monetary, uh, it's less, definitely less than 15,000 pounds. Definitely less. So, so with a team of five people working free, well, with no, it with no, a, I mean, it's not for free. It's no, just, but uh, much lower for equity, for equity. Yes, for also. equity. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, team of five people working for equity, 
cost of fifteen thousand pounds or dollars? Uh, pounds. Pounds. Oh, no, sorry, dollars. Dollars. Dollars for fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. In what space of time? Six months? No, in, it's more. It's, it's eight months now. In eight months, you have created an application which has been cited as being worth $3.3 million. Yes. <laughs> I think that's, <laughs> I think uh, that's even that's... moving by Facebook standard, isn't it? <laughs> Excuse me? I, I think... mean, no, it just, I think if... Um... Uh, if you if the app has potential because the investment valuation the investor valuations especially for social media apps are very controversial for example snapchat now is valued almost at 20 billion dollars whatsapp was bought by 17 billion dollars and people are asking how come it's such a simple app there's two buttons two screens and then it's it's worth millions Mm, so I think the biggest uh, uh, factor in these high valuations um, is the potential of the app. So is the app, does the app have a chance to be a global app or just for one country uh, or the market? So is it only for, let's say, only for high school students or for people of different age? Um, so our investors, they decided that our app could be used by both um middle schoolers, by college students, or by young adults, or by people middle-aged who, who want to meet, meet for, let's say, for a walk with their kids. So actually, it's very funny because I was talking with one, um, one um, woman from American University. She is an administrative assistant, and she said that she, she really loves this app. She sent me her feedback because she can meet up with other ladies who have little babies. So they, they would use this to go together for a walk, to get together for a walk. Uh, so our app has the potential to be used by people all age, ages. And also the team is impo important. So the investors decided that our team is very talented because, uh, like I said before, my developers are really great and they are also very passionate, which is very important in startups. So we work all days, all nights. So it's a sacrifice also. Yeah, so I think the potential and the idea and uh, the interest, they, they see big interest, media interest and people interest. So users really love the app because we have the first feedback and it's also great to see that our users, they want to create it with us. So they send us their ideas because they um, every day we get more than more than 50 messages at least from users saying that you should add this or you should add this or this would be cool. So it's also very nice to see that users want this fun thing to become the, very useful for them because they, they see that they will use it. So um, out of all the recent recommendations from users, which one sticks out for you the most? Which one have you acted on most recently? Mm -hmm. So we, we saw that users miss chat. Because on the beginning we didn't want to we didn't want to implement chat feature because like I said my aim is to make people spend more time together in the real life not in digital life so here I what I what I wanted to do at the beginning is that uh, you just uh, say where you want to meet what time and which uh, place and if people people see it so she can uh, join you and then you meet. But of course, chat is important because then you um, you can uh, discuss all the details or when you want to change the time. So we see that users want the chat, so we are implementing chat. And also, um, people want public events because it's very important for, uh, it's very important, it's very, um, how to say, because for now the app works only for uh, friends. So if I want to get coffee, I can only inform my friends. Uh, we were thinking about public events from the beginning, uh, since the beginning of our project, but then we decided that it's, it might be risky because you never know who will join you. You know, someone else can be on the other side of the, of the phone. But then the users, uh, they, um, they don't say that they uh, don't like because it doesn't have public events, but they say it would be even more cool if you include public events because when when they are in another city on on when they or when they travel or when when they just want to meet new people, they would use it to to get together for coffee, for example. 
So we are also working on the public events and we have a great idea how to do it. So you will be able to safely, let's say, meet someone new through the app. So it could function as a dating app as well. Well, it could, but we don't. I don't want to say it's a dating app because yes, uh, when, I, when I presented my app the first time uh, in March, uh, it was in San Francisco, and of course Americans they uh, right away they thought, wait, so it's like Tinder for real meetups, and I said, no, it's not Tinder for real meetups, and uh, the boys said, but you can inform. 20 girls at the same time that you want to have beer and you can be sure that at least one of them will, will quickly join you so you don't have to waste time you know first you need to start conversation then the girl has to you know like you and then you just invite her you know and then they said that it would be so much easier to use fun time to to just go on a date and i said no it's fun time is not an app for a date for dating uh, but it could be used like this of course i I have this in mind that people will use it. Uh, are you looking for investors? Mm -hmm. So we are still talking with our investors because we've been we've started talking with investors since uh, on December, and we were planning to sign everything before we release the app. But what I always say and what I uh, always advise other startups is. Um, to hold hold off as long as possible because I think it's such a serious decision which you will pick um, that it's not only the percent the shares and the money you know so it's also what investor can give you besides this and what like other the agreement is at least 30 or 40 pages so you know each sentence is very important and when you sign something like this it's a uh, I mean, it has huge potential, a uh, huge influence on the whole company. So you are looking for investors, but within reason, you're going to be very careful about who you work with. Yes. So I'm still, I still talk with my investor. I'm, uh, sorry. I still negotiate with the investors and I still open for the new offers. So because we get offers every week someone approaches us and asks us uh, if we need the money or if we need support so it's very nice because all the time we get new offers that's why I also I want to wait with signing agreement because you know more I wait I see the more the new offers come are coming and also the better offers you know so we can negotiate more and but of course I think this is the last uh, let's say month or last two months when we can work without the investors because we grow very fast right now because we released 10, 10 days ago but we already have uh, many users and we see that we need to you know to expand so we need more more people for for different functions and more developers so we will need investors so I think I will have to decide very soon and are you looking for people Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. I will be looking for more developers uh, because for now there's only six. There's still five. Uh, I mean, there's five, and there's one um, developer who who we outsource some stuff. But there's still not enough, and we more and more work each day. So I guess we will be looking for more developers and maybe some more uh, people for business development because uh, also our team is five people four technical people which are the boys so there's three developers and one graphic designer and then there's me so i'm respons responsible for the pr marketing finance investors legal stuff accounting all the taxes and human resource which is the hardest i think the hardest is to you know manage the team uh, so basically i sleep five hours maximum every day <laughs> So I think that I need some support in, on my side as well. <laughs> and are you looking for mentors? Uh, yes, or a I mentor? Think, yeah, so I always, uh, like, that's why I approached you, because I thought you, you would be a great advisor and you could give me your feedback, and you did, so I'm very, very happy. Yeah, so I have one mentor from my university. He's a professor who is, um, uh, let's say, he's an uh, experienced professional when it comes to startups and investors. So I can always ask him about the, the deals and what's the best, is it the, the, the best deal. So I always consult 
uh, my investor issues with him but also I have many uh, many other professors from my school also support support our project from different areas so could, could you give me some names oh yeah sure so my uh, so the professor is Krzysztof Piech <laughs> uh, and the other professors are for example Ma Marcin Wojtysiak Kotlarski uh, and uh, Tymoteusz Doligalski, so that, it's all the Polish names. Uh, but it's it's great that I'm still at school because we, we are still students. Because I think we have access to the, let's say, the best brains in in the country who help us and who support us, let's say, for free. You know, because they want students to succeed. So very often after classes or. During the breaks, I can I can go and ask them for feedback or for advice or what should I do when it comes to this or this or this, and they are very happy to help me. Mm, so, for example, if I would like to get the professional advice from uh, a company, you know, there there is like consulting agencies like this, I would pay so much money for this. So maybe that's why I didn't have to spend a lot of budget because we. Every, I see that everyone just wants to help us and everyone wants to be a part of this project and I think it's very, I think it, it means that this, uh, it might have potential because people want to spend their time just to help us, so it's great. Can you tell us a little bit more about this university? Mm -hmm. So it's Warsaw School of Economics and I did my bachelor's degree there and now I'm doing my master's and it's the best school in Poland. And I'm also very, I always recommend the school if anyone wants to study business. I think it's a great school. Uh, we have many, many international programs. Uh, so, for example, in my second year of college, I went to Singapore on exchange to National University of Singapore, which is also a great school. And usually, well, for example, uh, in I know that in universities in UK or in US, you have to pay a lot for uh, for exchange programs. And here we do we have it for free because the school sponsors uh, students, you know, for the for the exchange programs. And also the education is free as well. I did my bachelor studies in English also. And yeah, and I think it's a great school because you can choose your specialty from many, many different areas. So if you're interested in marketing or finance or economy, uh, you pick whatever you like. And it's strictly business school. So it's you can't, let's say, study medicine or science. You know, it's all the business. And it's not a big university. It's, I guess, it's around, there, there is around 5,000 people, students. You're supported by the Rotary Club and a number of other organisations. Does your university officially support your app idea? Have you had a launch there, for example? Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, so the university supports my idea because it, it started in my university. You know, I got the idea on my university and then I, before we started um, uh, working on Spontan very seriously, I was presenting Spontime during the classes. So for example, when we had a project for a marketing class and we had to do a marketing strategy for a chosen company, of course I did it for Spontime. <laughs> and, and always whenever I could, I was presenting Spontime, whatever I could, and professors got really interested. And actually professors helped me uh, to reach the investors. Because I didn't, we didn't approach any investors by ourselves. It was uh, very spontaneous, so I was presenting uh, spontane during my class and the professor really liked the idea and he asked if he can uh, forward the idea to, to investors who, who visit our school to find cool projects. Because since this is business school, uh, many investors look for startup ideas or for, uh, in general, for nice um, companies in our school uh, in students so they they come to school and they want to find some projects to invest to and my professor forwarded our idea to the investors and that's how it all started so when the first investors got interested then it's like like i said the domino effect takes off because when when other investors see that these ones are interested the other gets interested so it's all like um, i don't know how to say it all goes you know, you know, like the domino. <laughs> yeah. 
And yeah, so the school officially, like the even the, the dean of our office, uh, sorry, the dean of our school uh, wrote a reference letter for spawn time. Uh, so when we will um, when we will approach other universities, we can always um, add the, the letter. Because the school believes that it's a great idea uh, for students to meet during the breaks, so they don't have to spend the breaks on their laptops. It just because uh, the aim of spawn time is to make people spend more time together um, in real, not in the digital life. So school really supports this uh, idea and this project. And since the idea was born at university and was developed at university, and uh, professors got involved, and um, and I'm student. I'm the student, so school really supports us. Which market do you think potentially is going to be your biggest? Mm -hmm. uh, so for now, we are uh, trying to um, target college students, but from what I see in the in the let's say database of our users, uh, who uses the most our app is the high school students and the young adults. Because I think maybe college students are very busy and they they see their friends during you know during the everyday every day. And the young adults really so young adults I mean the graduates, uh, around twenty five year old. They really like the, the the app and they like to use it. So we may think about how to adjust uh, spawn time more to to the older generations a little bit. So like I said, the, the little young moms who want to go for a walk or young moms who want to go for a yoga class, you know, so they want to go with friends, something like this. You mentioned that you even had a user recently signing up on the Ivory Coast. How, how far afield have users signed up in the last 10, 10 days? So it's everywhere. So it's been really everywhere. I was very shocked because I, uh, on the, the first days, I was just looking at the number of users, but I wasn't looking at the place where they're from. We are only, so, so far, I thought that we are only popular in Europe. So people in Europe and the US heard about us. But I saw that uh, we are in Australia, in Asia, in Africa, and in South America, uh, which is crazy. And when I saw the little ivory coast, I was very shocked. And also, I think it's because I was, um, I did two exchange programs. One, uh, it was Rotary Exchange in the US in high school, and then um, University Exchange in Singapore. So usually, uh, when you go on exchange, you meet hundreds of international people. So then, I, we, we always, you know, connect on Facebook, and we, are, we have groups, and we have, uh, and we have uh, so we want to be still in touch. So uh, when I released Spawn Time, I just posted on the groups, you know, I just posted on our exchange programs, and then uh, my friends probably saw it on Facebook that I'm doing something like this. They probably saw it on the wall. So I think that's why we spread out so quickly, because even if one or two person downloads in another country, there's a big chance that, you know, this person can uh, encourage other people to download. So, so I think also my international experiences might have been the, the reason why we are everywhere right now. What are your plans for the next five years with this application? Oh yeah, so people always ask me what you want to do next. And I mean, I'm just focused on what's right now. So we want to, I'm just focusing on acquiring users so far. And then I have, well, I have plans for the next three years. What I want, how I see it, what I want to do with it, what features we want to add. So if we want to do the Windows phone or smart smartwatch, or um, we want to all move to San Francisco as well. Um, so this is like the first year and then also I have plans for the second and the third year but I don't know if I want to say it now because we'll see what happens because I planned what I plan I see it changes all the time you know every day um, makes changes to our, our plans and changes the deadlines and uh, so far it's better than we were expected so maybe I shouldn't plan ahead for three years because maybe we will have it in one year or in two years so we'll see and also everyone asks me will you sell it to facebook or will you sell it to google or something and i say we'll see what happens we'll just i'm 
you know, I don't want to say anything yet. <laughs> if you could choose a very high profile person to be your mentor, who would it be? Oh, wow, well, that's yeah, also people ask me what's my inspiration or who should uh, who should be your mentor or well, I think my my uh, big authority, not my authority, but like my dream would be, of course, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. But he was my mentor, of course. But I'm um, I'm a big fan of him. So you'd like to meet him? Oh, I would love to meet. That's my dream to meet him. Uh, because he also he started just like we did at university, and he was also so involved in it, and he believed in it, and even if. Everyone told him it doesn't make sense, or the school wanted to um, kick him off. No, how you say it in English? The school wanted to throw him out or kick him out. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It... still didn't give up. And also, um, like we had so many uh, times where we could give up, but we still didn't, and that's what he did. Because there were there used to be many different platforms like, like Facebook before. Even MySpace was very similar, or. Um, but he really believed in, in his idea, and I think that's why he he acquired this success. Because I think that the same time when we developed the project, there's probably 10 or 20 other startups doing exactly the same thing. And I think the one that will succeed will just be the one that won't give up. Do you come from a family of entrepreneurs? Uh, no. I mean, my parents are... Um, they always had free... Uh, free uh, jobs, occupations, so they, they never had to go in the morning and come back in the evening, so it was never a nine-hour job, uh, but they did like thousands of different, um, you know, every year they do something different, and it's also, yeah, it's, so they were never boring, so my mom is um, a nurse, from uh, she finished she graduated from a nursing school and my dad is a historian yeah he he studied history uh, but they they never worked in their fields they just went into taxes or business or um, yeah or like different stuff but they they never had like a, the company that they were working on so many years they were just doing this and the next year this and the next year this do you have any siblings. Yes, I have uh, two, one sister and one brother, so I have two siblings, and they both uh, study medicine. So my sister just uh, finished her medical school, and my brother is in his fourth year. year. So I was also planning to be a doctor. It was actually very funny, because I was the only one who was planning to be a doctor. And my siblings, they wanted, my sister wanted to be a pilot and my brother wanted to be a developer, computer developer. And I, want, I wanted to be a doctor, but the, of course the things turned out completely differently. So they are doctors and I'm not. <laughs> um, what sort of school child were you? Uh, were you confident and sociable or, or quiet and retiring? I think I was Sociable. I always had many, many friends, and I always wanted to interact with people. Maybe that's why I want this app because I, I really want people to interact because that's how life should look like. And I was, I think I was uh, calm. <laughs> I was never the nasty child, you know. I, I always, when my parents said you have to be home this time, I was home this time, and uh, I always had many uh, different um, classes uh, after school after school classes. So I went to music school and I played chess and I learned many, I had language classes and I had art classes and I had even memory class, you know, my mom sent me. So it was very funny because two times a week we had to, me and my brother had to go for a class where they taught us how to memorize quickly, you know, so it was very funny. But I was always very busy and, um, but yeah, and I liked it and I love the music. What what do you do outside your startup outside your studies if you have any any time at all what what are your your interests mm -hmm. so my biggest interest is the uh, traveling uh, I, I I love traveling and do and anything connected with it so I actually used to write a travel blog before I started what's so, the name of the blog oh it's live love travel pl <laughs> so um but I don't write, I don't have time right now, but I, I like to read the magazines, um, 
or watch some TV, like travel shows. And whenever I try, every year I try to go for at least one time abroad uh, to see other country, even for a week. I think everyone has time to do it, and also you don't have to be very. It doesn't have to be expensive to go abroad because, like I told you, I have friends all around the world, so I just buy very cheap plane tickets and then I just go to a place and visit my friends and then uh, they show me around so I think that's the best place uh, the, the best way to actually get to know the country not with the not with the organized tour but just by yourself and the locals show you around so, th so my biggest passion is traveling and then music I love music uh, I play the piano so when I'm burned out because uh, sometimes I feel that I can't do any more work um, so then I just, I don't know, play the piano or go, or go jogging or go on a bike or just meet my friends and just, I don't know, just regular activities. Well, what sort of connections would you like to make via Idea Me? I mean, this is an Idea Me interview and the platform will launch um, this year. And as I said, it's about uh, the creators of big ideas creating the opportunity for future creators of, of big ideas to make contact with them, to ask questions, potentially mentor. What type of people would you like to make contact with? Yeah, so I'm, I'm always willing to meet people who are very passionate about what they do. It doesn't matter what they do, but when I see that they, they have this idea and they believe in this idea, then when I just meet with them and I just connect with them and I watch them, observe them and... I see how their idea develops, then I get very inspired and motivated. So that's why I'm a big fan, fan, uh, fan of co-working spaces, because when you see these people, it motivates you. So I think the idea is an amazing um, way to meet uh, all these people with all these great ideas that can actually inspire you and motivate you. So. I think it doesn't matter what the person does or what what's their their field of the of their uh, uh, of their action. So you're you're currently working on your masters. When when will that be completed? Uh, so actually, I have my last fine my last final exam on Monday, which is, uh, yeah, because I have one today and I'm going to have one tomorrow, so actually it's a very busy period for me, and Monday is my last exam, and I'm all done with my exams. Best now, of luck with that. Thank you. <laughs> now I will just have to write the thesis, so, but I have one year to write the thesis, so I think I'll, I'll find time to do it, but I'm glad I'm just done with classes, so I have more time to focus on, on the startup. <laughs> So you will soon complete your master's. In eight months, you've launched a startup which uh, cost 15000 and is now already worth, so they say, $3.3 million. That's an awful lot for a 21-year-old to achieve. And you're still smiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm smiling because everything's perfect and great. So, <laughs> what would you say to I don't know, fourteen, fifteen-year-olds that would love to replicate what you have done in the past few years? What would you say to them to inspire them? So, first of all, don't be scared, because the the worst thing you can do is do nothing. So, like I said before, I had so many amazing ideas before that, but I didn't do anything, and someone else uh, tried them, and they succeeded. So, so I think we, you should try. You don't be scared that it won't work out, or people will laugh, or someone will talk bad about you, because, of course, there will be people who won't like your idea. But you try, and each, each time you try something new, you learn a lot. So even if uh, spawn time won't work out, I will never regret this eight months I've spent on it. Because it's been the best time of my life, I guess, and I've never learned so much. And all these experiences, working with people, making so many people that I would have never thought before that I would have a chance to meet. Uh, it's, it's amazing, so I will never regret, even if it if it won't go as I plan. So, uh, so the first thing, just take action and, and do what you, what you love to do, and that's my advice. <laughs> Karolina Demjancek, founder of Spontime, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Have a great day.